Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. We are so excited today to have Jane Fonda. I love Jane Fonda. Who doesn't love Jane Fonda? Everybody loves her. And she knows so many things. She's an activist. She's an actress. She's a writer. She's a fitness guru. She's a mom. She's a grandmom. She's every woman. She just knows about so many things, and I know that you've got lots of questions today, so we're going to get right to it. But Jane, first I want to say thank you. You flew in, and your plane was late, and you came right here, and you're a trooper. I am. I, know. <laughs> I am. I'm a trooper. I said a safe. You said no. That's not a, a safe, safe thing. To say. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> well, it's great to have you. So thank you for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. I'm so, honored to be here. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to ask you the questions, and the people are in there, and you can talk to them straight, or you can talk to me, whatever okay. you like. So the first one is from Tina. Tina says, "Hi, Jane. How does it feel going from a sex symbol to a grandmother? And you're still as sexy ever, by the way." It feels good. <laughs> Are you a sexy grandmother? Uh, yeah, I am. I am. You know, I, re I, I was reading an excerpt from my memoirs about the making of On Golden Pond the other day in Thomasville, Georgia. I lived in Georgia for 20 years. And I suddenly realized with a start that I am now the same age that Katharine Hepburn was when, when we made that movie. And you thought she was an old lady. I did. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> not just any old lady. I mean, she was pretty awesome. I yes. think she's so awesome. But, but, you know, I'm, I mean, I can't imagine her shacked up. <laughs> or even yearning for romance. And, um, and you are. You know, I, yeah. And, and so uh, I, it's just, you know something, one of the things that I've learned now that in my old age is there's no one way to do life. There are... Each individual does life slightly differently, and um, you know, and I, mine is definitely different. <laughs> but I feel I, I I feel good about being a grandmother. I, I spent Easter as the Easter Bunny. I have this full costume with ears and, oh, and a white face, and I glue straws to my cheeks. And <laughs> I was with my grandkids and all their oh. all these children oh, and doing an Easter egg hunt, and I just I love that. That's I, I love that, and I love the fact that I'm also still romantic. So that's great. So what you're saying is you didn't go from a sex symbol to a grandmother. You hung on to being a sex symbol for yourself. Well, I never saw myself as a sex well, symbol. Well, I mean part of your life as a sexy woman. You, you hung on to that and you're a grandmother. That's the secret, yeah. isn't it? I like that. Yeah. What do you think you, this is from MG, what do you think you would say is something your father taught you? Oh. <laughs> well, you know, my dad didn't verbally teach me very much. He didn't, I, th I imagine he was quite different than your father. He didn't talk a lot. But oh, he that's made very these different. movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> but he made, you know, I had a conversation once with Yolanda King, the, the one of the daughters of Martin Luther King. I was writing my memoirs and she happened to call me. We got on this conversation of fathers and I said, did your father ever take you on his lap and tell you about life and values and teach you things? And she said, no. And I said, no, my, my dad didn't either, but you had his sermons. And I had my father's movies, Grapes of Wrath, oh, Oxbow wow. Incident, Twelve Angry Men, The Wrong Man. He, you know, the plays that he did, like Clarence, he played Clarence Darrow. And embedded in these movies that were the ones that he really loved were values, you know, very of fairness and equality and against racism and... Um, I adored my father, and because I knew that these were the characters that he wanted to be like, I, that's what taught me. This one's from Molly. Molly says, I know you've been married three times. I've been married twice. I'm not sure I'd ever do it again. Would you? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, everybody has their own way. Some people really like to be married. My father was married five times. Oh, really? So it's not in my cards <laughs> to have one long. Your mom and dad were fifty-five yeah. years. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Not I, me. My I, my father, mother. Yeah. I'm. But you've been married a long time. Thirty too. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mazel tov. I mean, I, I I think it's fabulous, and I wish that it had happened to me. But I think at my age, to get married again, why? Yeah. Exactly. I understand. All right. Here's another one from Catherine. There's a lot of new thinking on fitness today. What do you think we should know that's different than it used to be? I do hear a lot of things like don't do the high aerobics and... Uh, well, I think there's less emphasis on high impact yeah. uh, uh, aerobics, but the, the two big changes um, that have happened since, 
since I started the fitness industry. Right. Um, one is, is core training. There's much more understanding yes. now about the importance of working your core, which means you know, your, your, your stomach, your back, your hips, your pelvis, the part that may, makes us able to function mm -hmm. safely and well in, in life. And um, part of doing that uh, asks us to work out on instable, unstable surfaces. You know, there's the BOSU, there's right. the all, all different kinds of, of wobbly surfaces that they put you on, trainers in gyms, for example. And th so you do your bicep curls or whatever you're doing while you're on an unstable surface. And, do you like um, that? I mean, do you approve of that? Well, opinion? I have a fake knee and a fake hip, so I don't do it that much anymore. But when I did, I found it very good because I'm challenged in the balance department. Right, yeah. And what it, it, re it recruits muscles that we don't often use, the smaller kinds of muscles, the connective muscles that are... As you get older, if those muscles aren't strong, you pay for it in terms of functionality. So that, that's a biggie. That's a big change in, in terms of um, modern-day exercise. There's much more uh, emphasis on balance, and we ne there never used to be. Well, right. balance in every w literally being able to walk without tipping over, which right. becomes important when you get older, but also balance figuratively, keeping a balance between weight, you know, resistance training, aerobic training, um, the kind of things that flexibility that yoga or Tai right. Chi or Pilates could do for you and keeping your workout balanced in terms of how it's using your body right, yeah. is very important. Very. This is from Storm. She says, for women who are over 40, is there something they should specifically do or they should not do in terms of exercise? Well, I think it, uh, Storm. It's a good name. For <laughs> I like that. Um, I, I think Doing anything that, that is very impactful to your joints is probably to be avoided. Um, for me, um, you know, I'm 73, and my, wow. my message is, even if you've never worked out a day in your life, it is never too late to start. And you know the expression, use it or lose it. Right. What that leaves out is, you can get it back again, right. even if you lose it. Well, it's that's just great. amazing how what a difference it can make yeah. working out. Yeah. I, I, I use it for, for uh, mind therapy. When I'm out in the park out there running, mm. I just feel better about everything. You run? Oh, yeah. Oh. I run and walk and run and walk. Oh, I, I used run to run. I, I loved running. Yeah, I do. I cycle now. Oh, I can't do that. I like that. It hurts my back. Cycling? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, for a long time. Uh, this is from Jean Davis. What gave you the confidence to do the first workout tape, since this was not the field you were famous for? I love the tape, by the way, even though I was just a kid, because, of course, every woman I knew had it. <laughs> Don't you love these women who have to tell us that they were kids when they loved us? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, this, is the tr this is how it came about, weirdly enough. I had been working out, um, and <clears throat> it was something I really knew about. I'll try to make this real short. <laughs> but, I had a statewide organization in California called the Campaign for Economic Democracy and it was the 70s and there was a recession and it was hard to raise money and there was this terrible guy, Lyndon LaRouche, extreme right oh, wing, him. Terrible, horrible, terrible, horrible character who funded his operation because he started a computer business and I thought, oh. I got to start a business that can fund the political work. And then I ran into someone very smart who said, never go into a business you don't understand. Oh, well, boy. that narrowed it down a <laughs> lot. The only thing I really understood was working out. And so I started the workout business. And for a couple of years, all the money went to the political organization. Wow. Yeah. You are a trooper. <laughs> and um, You're a trooper. it was a great experience on a personal level. But you know what you said about you, you run f for the metal thing? Right. I hate working out. Oh, you do? Oh, I do. <gasps> Did you hear this? But why Jane I do it? Jane hates working out. Why I do it? I don't wake up saying, ah, can't wait. I do it because I know I'm going to feel so good right. after. Right. I do it for the same reason you do. Uh -huh. Oh, it's the endorphins. Exactly. Just, and 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 just feeling good about yourself. And when I'm doing the weights for my upper body, honestly, I'm euphoric. I just can't wait to get to that part. I don't like exercising my legs because it hurts, but I, you can't give me enough upper body stuff. Really? I love it. Who would have thought? It. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now, what is left? Renee wants to know, what is left on your bucket list? Have you ah, got a bucket list? 
Yes. Oh, good. The minute Ted Turner and I split up, I developed a bucket list. Really? And it started with hiking to Machu Picchu because I knew I could never do it and I wanted it <laughs> with him. Oh. <laughs> so bucket list, Machu Picchu, I've done that. Wow. Uh, scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef, done that. Wow. I made a movie in French again, which I hadn't done since 1970, done that. I mean, I've... I've, I've checked off a lot of things. That's I, fabulous. I don't know what's left. I don't know what's left. Doing a TV doing series, nothing. maybe. How about doing I, nothing? No, I spend a lot of time doing nothing. Do I treasure doing nothing. Of course, I'm not really doing anything. I'm meditating or I'm praying or I'm yeah. trying to be very, very quiet. I like to spend a lot of time alone. I do, too. Yeah. I need you it. do? I do, yes. I oh, couldn't, I'm I couldn't, so happy to hear I that. I couldn't reach I love to read. That's what I, how I love to spend my time. I read at least one book a week. Yeah, I, I read a lot to read. too. But I always, I feel like, if you spend like we go through very intense right. times, right. people right. like you and me, you know, uh -huh. we're very public right now, right. you know, and we're giving and we're talking and we're right. writing and we're, bleh, and then it's I feel like I empty out, That's and right. I have to take time to refill. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. I feel the same way. Uh, here's from Deb. Jane, I'm recovering from back surgery, and I was wondering if you have any advice on how to keep positive about that, I guess. Hmm. Well, hmm. do therapy. You have to do your physical therapy. I've had back surgery, too. You have to, hmm. you know, you have to be sure you do what I assume the doctor gave you physical therapy to do, and you have to do it, and you have to do it faithfully. You have to be, make very sure that your stomach is strong to support your back, and but on the deeper level, your question is interesting because I just finished writing a book and it, partly it had to do with aging and how so many people are in wheelchairs. I mean, gosh, I met Stephen Hawkins, the great physicist who's had ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, for 50 years and is, he can't do anything but twitch one cheek. And yet he's just written a book about the origins of the universe. Mm. So. Your physical condition is not who you are. It does not define you. Don't let it define you. There are so many much more interesting aspects to life, like your heart, your soul, your mind. These things are not affected by your back. That's <laughs> and, great. And emphasize those kinds of things. This becomes more and more important as you get older. That's great. It is amazing when somebody like Stephen Hawkins has such an impairment and, he just, and life is full, so full for him. Yes. It's wonderful. Uh, this is from Lauren. I know you lived in France for many years. Would you ever consider living there again? Well, I just, uh, last June, a year ago June, I did um, uh, a movie there in French. I mentioned um, earlier, I hadn't done a movie in French since 1970 with Jean-Luc Godard. And I was staying there and I thought, no, I, I could live here. But um, not really. No, I don't he, think so. No. I, I, I kind of was happy to be home again. But I love France. I love the French. I love the French food. And, yeah. Oh, Here's from Lily. She says, good day, Jane. I was hoping you could give me some new advice on belly fat. I'm over 40, and it seems to be settling at my midsection. Please help. Well, Lily? Lily. Lily. First of all, part of what happens in midlife and older is it starts to come on around your waist. It does. And, you know, it's, it's, it's almost inevitable. So, again, it's not who you are. Don't let it freak you out. Now, that said... The only way to get rid of fat is with cardio exercise um, and cutting down on calories, which means the few, you, you want to eat fewer calories and you want to be sure the calories you eat are meaningful, not fast foods and stuff like that, not junk food. Meaningful calories, you know, and reducing it and making sure that you're burning more than you're taking in, burning calories more than you're eating calories. But cardio activity not only gets rid of the fat underneath your skin, it's the only thing that gets rid of the fat that's marbled in your muscle. Um, and so, you know, the best thing to do is you, you can do all the sit-ups in the world. You can have a really strong stomach. But to get rid of the fat that's there, you've got to do cardio. So how much cardio do you do a week? Well, it, it very, normally, depending on where I if I'm at my ranch in New Mexico, I will walk for an hour and a half every day. Oh, wow. And Fast. a lot of that is up. Fast, yeah. Well, to get a cardio, you have to be uphill. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uphill. Um, 
And when I'm not there, I do the uh, treadmill or the uh, exercise bicycle or the elliptical, and it's boring. So I do 10 minutes on one and 10 minutes on another. So and I do try to do hour? it three or four times a week. For a half hour? 40 minutes. Really? Yeah. Good. That's why you look so good. Um, Miss Fonda, you are an absolute rock star. I didn't say it. Daryl did. I love and respect you to pieces. How do you stay so beautiful? Oh, well, good genes and a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't you love much. a woman who's honest? <laughs> and Mrs. says, oh, hello. You girls should do a TV show or movie together. Love you both. Yes. Yes. Good idea. Girl power. Uh, Tashi wants to know, do you think the roles for women in movies have evolved since you played Barbarella? The what in movies have evolved? The roles for women well, in women movies. Have, have they evolved? In other words, in Barbarella days... We did a lot of movies where we, where we had women look like sex kittens, and do you think we've sort of evolved from that? You ever seen the movie? You know, there were women in movies before there was censorship, before yeah. there was that, what's it called? You know, the, the hide, the, the hide, 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 there was a code. Yeah. The hide oh, report. Oh, man, whether it was Mae West yeah, or, right. or Myrna Loy or Barbara Stanwyck, I mean, they were hot, uh, you know, women who were not afraid to ask what they wanted and I mean and then of course it all got sort of mm, pushed down now we're back being sexy but a lot of it is objectified I think yeah. um, still today I mean I can't believe what young women are asked to do in terms of taking their clothes oh, off I know. pretty explicit sex I'm I know. glad that didn't exist when I oh, <laughs> the first movie I'm <laughs> I, I, when I was first making movies Men and women, husbands and wives couldn't even sleep in the same bed. Oh, they yeah. They were black and white movies in separate beds, I know. Wow. So, you know, I don't know how good a trade-off it is to see every frontal nudity and explicit sex. It's not sexy. No, it's not. No. It's in the imagination. I don't think there's anything w worse or more of a turn-off than a porno movie. It's just like, oh, no, I can't. Oh, I've got to tell you the good ones. <laughs> it turns me right oh, away. Oh, you know, God. women are making them now, and they're much they, better. Yeah. They mean they have a romantic story. Let's have a little bit of no, a story. No, it's the women initiate. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. that'd be better. No, they're pretty good. Yeah, okay. I'll have to send you some notes. Yeah, no, yeah, I want to know. See, you're single. That's why you've got all this stuff. Married ladies, we don't have that. No, well, there's a difference between being single and married. <laughs> yes, there I'm is. I'm living with. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, you mean there's a middle ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Perhaps you could discuss on Golden Pond and what it was like working with your father in that flick. Mm. Was that your first time working together? It was my first time working in movies with my father. When I was way younger, like 15, 16, 17, I did a couple of regional theaters with him, plays, but it was the first movie. I produced it. He was dying, and I knew he didn't have much longer. And I bought the play that was uh, on Broadway. And Did you do that because you wanted him to have that? I wanted, I wanted, it was the only way I could work with him before he died. Aww. And um, I, I, it was a, a totally amazing experience, and we don't have time for me to go into detail about it. But uh, I think I learned more from Hepburn during the making of that movie. I mean, she was one of these women, and it's, it's so great when you get older. You become an elder, and she took that very seriously about teaching to younger people. And she took me, I can't say under her wing, because she didn't like me very much. Um, <laughs> but she didn't. But, I don't think but, she ever liked anybody a whole well, lot. Well, that could be. And she didn't like me because I was married, because I had children. She oh. thought actors never should have children, and I had a pet. She <laughs> preferred people who had absolutely no attachments, <laughs> except to her. That's right. That's but funny. she had a greatness about her, and she taught me a lot. And What would you think, like, what one thing she taught you was... I read that she made you jump into the lake. She made me do the dive myself. Yes. I had no intention of doing that. And it was icy cold. She also... Well, what did she say to make you do that? Did she just shame you into it? Well, it all happened the first time I met her. Where she was already... It was all ready to go. And I came to where she lived in New York. And the first thing she said to me was, I don't like you. <gasps> and um, <coughs> There were reasons why she said that, and once we've got that out of the way, the next question was, oh, are you going to do the backflip yourself? Well, <laughs> I, following on the heels of I don't like you, I was not going to tell her that, no, I was not going to do the backflip. There was a double already lined up. And besides, I suddenly remembered her dive in the Philadelphia story. Uh huh. So I said, of course I'm going to do the dive myself. <laughs> Well, when I finally did, it took me a month of rehearsals, and I, it was never a good dive, but she would hide in the bushes and watch me. 
And, and when she, I finally did it one time, it, I did it better than it's actually in the movie. She she praised me and told me that I taught her to respect me. So that was real important. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that was so really. So she pushed you. She did. She in many ways she pushed me. She used to get together with me for tea in the afternoon in the house that I rented for her up there because I produced the movie, and she would read me my lines, give me line readings. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, was, oh my God. Character. I'm sure the director loved that. Uh, this this is a question is from Griselda. Major life lessons learned. Oh, my goodness. Good we, we need another hour. Okay, here's real quick. Okay. It's more important to be interested than to be interesting. Very good. I like that. This is from Edgar. Jane, how are the Braves for this year? And what about Peter? Oh, Peter, your brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, see, the man I'm living with right now is more into football and basketball, so I haven't really been following the Braves. I hate to say that. Um, I'm more into uh, college football. Peter is fine, great. I see him out in, now that I'm living back in California. Thank you for asking. Uh, what? This is from Vicky. What tips do you have for grandmothers to stay fit so they can keep active and play with their grandchildren? Right. It's important. Um, Exercise. Yeah. <laughs> you know, now, ideally, you would do cardio exercise three times a week, and you would also do something to maintain muscles, because maintaining muscles is important, not just because it, it's what increases your metabolism, so you'll burn calories, but also it's good for your brain. You know, as we age, the frontal cortex, which is where executive functioning takes place, shrinks as you age. But if you work out, you, you, you minimize the, the shrinkage in the front part of your brain. It's also good for your bones and your balance. So doing cardio, doing weight work, um, keeping, you know, practicing, balancing, things like that. All of those things are, are very, very important and probably one of the key things to aging successfully. That's great. Now, uh, we, this is, and I'm interested in this, because I love the we. You're not interested in the rest. No. I don't know, but you're I mean. You're smiling to a question you're interested in. <laughs> no, I'm okay. really interested in this. Will you do a Jane Fonda workout for the Wii gaming system? Oh. I love the Wii. Right. Um, that could be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm marinating in that thought. That's I mean, I, in, I intend to kind of, you know, I've started, I'm, I'm back in the fitness business. I have, last winter, I came out with two new, my new brand is called Prime Time because it's for boomers and seniors. Great. And it, they're having a big, I mean, people I really, 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 really yeah. love them. And then That's I've just great. made two more that'll come out next, next fall and winter. And, um, and you're in them. We, W-I, We Gaming is a, is a possibility because I watch my son do it. I want an avatar, man. I want <laughs> people to be able to create their own avatars and join me in a workout class. That'd be great. I think it's a great idea. That's great. That's what this is, like a live stream. Uh, at this point in 2011, Kerr Shapiro wants to know, which of your many causes is closest to your heart? Causes? You work on um, so many things, women's media. Well, I have two. I have two um, what, what, one is the issue of adolescence, adolescent development, adolescent sexuality. In fact, I'm, I'm starting now on three new books about adolescent sexuality and gender. And... Um, Partly because my adolescence was challenged and partly because adolescents are tough. You know, it's easy to love babies. They're cuddly and they don't talk back. Adolescents are prickly and it's hard. And so a lot of adults who work with adolescents don't like them very much. Um, so I'm, I'm very focused on boys and girls, not just girls, adolescents. And the other is um, trying to stop violence against women and girls which is severe everywhere in the world. One in three girls is raped or ab sexually abused, mm. oftentimes by members of her family. Um, there's violence all over the world, and I'm very much a part of Eve Ensler's organization, V-Day, until the violence stops. Eve Ensler is the woman who wrote the vagina monologues, and out of that play built a global movement to stop violence against yeah, women. it's a great, great movement. Um, this is an interesting one. I don't know if you can answer this one. This is from Cooper. Hi, Jane. I drive to and from work and don't really have time to go to the gym. How can I add more activity to my daily life without going to the gym? Right? Oh. You can work out in the car? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a woman, you could do Kegel exercises that's in the right. car. That's right. Um, actually, you, you can do abdominal exercises right. in, in the car. Mm -hmm. um, just try to carve out 10 minutes here and there. 
Um, walk whenever you can, you know, if instead of taking an escalator, walk up the stairs, instead of taking the moving carpets at airports, walk. You know, just all the daily activities, try to do them. Always take the in stairs. In an active way. Always take always the stairs. Take the unless stairs. it's like too high. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but it's, it's really... There's always a way that you can get more active. It doesn't have to necessarily be going to the gym or doing a workout. This is from Carol, and we don't have much time, so I'm going to try to get in as many as possible. Jane, I've been having a great deal of difficulty with foot injuries and surgeries lately. I remember reading you once broke your foot while shooting the China Syndrome. Do you have an exercise routine that someone can follow with this difficulty? Do you have any ideas? For well, it? I don't know why you, you, you broke your foot, so, you know, it all depends on, um, you know, it was, if it's lack of balance, there are exercises you can do that will help improve your balance. When you broke your foot, what did you do? Did you have physical therapy? Well, I broke my foot five times, so. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just had a cast. Uh-huh. No, but physical therapy after? No. No. So I, I'm not quite sure about that. When I broke my wrist a few years ago on a... Uh, fell off of a, a snowmobile. Well, actually, I went off a cliff, but we won't go into that. But anyway, I had to do a lot of therapy. I couldn't even bring my hand up, and yeah. it scared me to death. Right, but yeah. I, I didn't do anything for my foot, no. Yeah. Um, and Jane, this is from Christina. Jane, what's the best way to get back in shape physically and emotionally after a moderate chronic illness? I guess it's sort of the wow. same, right? Well, I, yeah, I think chronic illness you know I my the letters that I get from people who work out to my videos the old ones and the new ones are oftentimes people who have come through chronic illnesses and mastectomies and all kinds of things like that or emotional traumas right and there is no question that exercising will help you get through both physically and mentally emotionally spiritually um, all kinds of traumas be they physical or mental have um, this is an interesting question. Have you ever worked with another ac actor that you were starstruck by who gave you goosebumps? Yeah, Redford. <laughs> I made three movies with him. I, fortunately, I was married every, every time. I was always in love with him. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Are you over it yet? Um, uh, someone just called me today that has a script for the two of us. Wow. And we'll see. Do it. Now he's married, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, and I think we have uh, room for one more. This is from Joan. Jane, when you have time for a vacation again, what places in our world seem to draw you back? Well, I have a ranch in New Mexico that is my spiritual home, and I go there. I, ride, I fly fish, and there's a river, and so I fish, and I ride my horses, and I meditate, and I oh, hike, and that's great. where I go to refill myself. And the ne next part of that question is, what friend or friends would you most enjoy having along? Well, you're not sharp liver. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're one I'm of them. Ready? I'll come. I'll come. I'll, I'll Eve come. Ensler, Jody Evans, <laughs> Pat Mitchell, Gloria Steinem. Well, that sounds like a good group. I'm uh, definitely coming. Should we do it? Yeah, okay, I'm give me ready. Five. I'll, I'll, I'll make the <laughs> pasta. <laughs> And, and my boyfriend. Yes, of And course. I love having my grandkids there, too. Oh, that's great. And my children. That's good. How, in fact, how, it's a crowd. How many <laughs> grandchildren do you have? I have two grandchildren. And my how? son and daughter-in-law keep rehearsing, but they're not there yet. You know, well, they will. As my mother used to say, it'll, it'll do you good to see a try. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jane. You're wonderful. Let me give you a little kiss. I hope I answered your question. Oh, okay. you did. You did. Thanks you were for great. joining us. We're out of time. I, I could sit and talk to her forever. I know you guys could too. She's wonderful and lovely and thank and you. so real, so very real. And you've shared so much. So I really thank you for that. Thanks everybody for tuning in, and we'll see you next week on Mondays with Marlowe.